In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to install Lunar Vim in probably less than 20 seconds. All right, so head over to the description of this video or really any of my videos, and you can see a link to my GitHub. Click on that link, it'll take you over to my GitHub. Click on Lunar Vim. All right, go down into the description here to where it says install in one command. Now, this will definitely work on Arch Linux, Ubuntu, and probably Mac as well. I haven't really tested it on Windows. All right. So now copy that command and now before you run it, what you need to make sure of is that in your .config, you don't have an nvim. So like you can't cd in the nvim, um, so there's no um, nvim directory, right? Uh, because this will just fail to install if you still have that there. So you can move that to like nvim.old or something like that. All right, so now we'll paste the command in here and run it. Um, you'll just be greeted with a few messages all right and so what it's doing now is it's pulling in basically all of the plugins uh, I hope to shrink this list in the future but these are the plugins that we use right now you can press Q and then you know um, quit Vim and start it back up now you'll have Lunar Vim and it will you know give you all the same defaults and basically you know give you everything I've been working on for a little while um, and you'll notice I'm installing pretty much all of the tree sitter language parsers down here uh, so what you can do is if you don't want them all, I install them just to kind of make the experience like easier out of the box, but you can go to your settings here and instead of um, passing all to this, you can pass it a table full of the languages that you actually want to use. You can also use the settings file to change things like your color scheme, autocomplete, and a few language specific things that I will probably update in the future so that you can do more with that. All right, so. Now that you have it, um, we're going to talk about a few other things. So what you can do with it is say you want to just take this and just use it as something to build off of for your own config, right? So what we're going to do is just take a look at all the directories that are in here. So what you'll have to do is if you like if you want to just use this as yours and completely forget about like all the history and stuff that um, is under my GitHub, you can just remove the .git and .github directories here and then basically it's just completely decoupled and you can just kind of build from there. Um, it will basically have no um, history for any of the stuff that's done there. So you could just use it completely as a, uh, as a template. Um, the other thing is if you go into, we'll just CD into Lua here. And these are the configurations for all of the plugins. So you can check those out here. Um, just, it'll be the name of the, it'll be LV and then the name of the plugin. So you can just read about those. Same with color scheme and a few other things. And if you're just interested in the LSP, um, this is everything for basically the LSP. So to get it all started, I recommend looking at init.lua in LSP. Uh, but these are all the language specific settings for all the LSP. And this is the stuff that I really, you know, um, want to build this config around. It's just having good LSP support or language server protocol support. Another thing is after installing this, um, you're going to want to go into dot local share envim. And you can get an idea of where a lot of these uh, things live. Now, this is the data directory for NVIM, right? Um, and this is the data directory probably for a lot of your programs that you're not really sure of. Um, you, might, you might not have known this. So for LSP, you can go inside of LSP install here. And you can see that I've installed ones for Bash, EFM, HTML, Lua, and Python. Yours will be under here as well for the most part, um, as long as it's a language supported. So what you can do to find out if it's a language that's supported is you can do LSP, um, and we'll actually just put install here, and just a tab completing, and you'll see if your language is supported, and you could just usually install it and it should just work. So things like Python, um, Vue, um, even Vim itself, um, and a few others here, and just you know install the one that you want, and Hopefully it just works out of the box if I'm supporting it yet in the LSP config section. So the other thing is if you go into um, site, right, and if you go into pack, and then if you go into packer, and actually what I'll do is clear this up a little bit, and go into packer, you'll see opt and start. All right, now start, and th this is where all of your plugins go, by the way. This is like the, the place for them, right? So if we do PWD, It'll be in home your user dot local share envim dot local share is like the xdg data directory. This is where like the data for a lot of your programs goes. So envim is the program in question here, and then under site pack packer. If you're using packer, 
is uh, where all your plugins are going to be. So there's two different kinds of plugins, or not really two different kinds of plugins, but two different kinds of ways to manage plugins. And inside of Start, um, we have like all the plugins that are going to just happen immediately on Start. So whether or not I reference this in my config anywhere, it's just going to start. It's just going to be an optional plugin. So like for instance, these are the ones that I basically had to not make optional for one reason or another. So if you notice that like, okay, I still have access to Ranger, that's this plugin here, you could just head into this directory and delete this directory right here and you won't have access to Ranger anymore. And what do I mean by that is like this command here, uh, I think it's R, M, M, R or something like that. Yeah, like toggle that. So you won't, you'll have access to that even though like you didn't pull it in, right? And that's the reason why you would have access to that, say if you blew away Lunar Vim and tried to bring your configuration back uh, at a later date. Another thing is if you head into opt, these are optional plugins, okay? This is where most of the plugins that I bring in are, just completely optional. And the only way that they actually are loaded into the config is if you explicitly say that you want them, right? So how do you know that? So what you can do is, let's, uh, and we'll go into the Envim directory here. So PWD, where am I? I'm in home, chris.config, Envim. So I'm in my Envim directory. And so how you'll know that is you'll go under Lua and, whoops, this is under LSP. Hold up. All right. You'll go under Lua. You'll go under plugins here. And I have a helper function right here. Um, this basically just checks if the, you can ignore this function entirely. Uh, just know that this actually pulls in the plugin. Um, and this is a deeper dive than probably a lot of people want to take. But what I'm saying here for all the plugins is I'm basically saying like, okay, use this plugin, uh, the name of the plugin, and then I make it optional. So you don't have to pull it in. How you're actually pulling it in is you're saying, okay, require plugin right here, right? So you say like, after you pull it in and it's optional, you say require a plugin. If you don't require the plugin, then it won't be active in your config. And this is for optional plugins. Now you can see I have a example of a non-optional plugin here, uh, Tree Sitter, right? And for one reason or another, I couldn't make this optional. Um, so this is always going to start for all of your NeoVim sessions in the future, unless you remove it from that start directory that I showed you earlier. All right, so the other thing is the config file. So like your real init.lua, like the thing that, like init.lua, the one that's directly in Envim. So if we do like a PWD here. So init.lua that is directly under Envim, that's like the first thing that NeoVim reads, right? And it sources all of these kind of, like all of these requires like in a row, right? Like a, one after another. So the first thing it does is it goes and looks at plugins. Now, if you go decide you want to like turn off a plugin, like comment it out and then whatever, also make sure to comment out its config here. So if we wanted to turn off Galaxy Line, for instance, which is this line down here that's giving us information about what branch we're on and uh, what um, LSP we have active, what you'll need to do is turn this off, right? Comment it out. And then we'll go to the plugins, right? And so we'll look for a Galaxy Line, all right? And that's right here. See, um, and what we'll do is we'll get rid of that. And then also we will get rid of the require for it. Uh, yes. And now we just don't have galaxy line anymore. See, so no errors or anything. You just won't see galaxy line anymore because I didn't, you know, I, I just turned it off and that's how you'll turn off things that you don't want. Like if you want to test something or if you just don't want a particular plugin, right now but maybe you'll want it later this is a good way to do that so we can like turn it back on by doing this come up here go to lua go to uh where is it plugins.lua we'll search for galaxy line again we'll turn it back on and then we'll just make sure to require it again all right and there you go it's back all right so you can do that with pretty much everything um another thing is like I guess like you know you have this like dashboard thing here like you turn this on and off um, like maybe you don't want like some of the personalization like my website down here at the bottom or you want to put something other than Lunar Vim up here at the top because really what this is is the same default config right so if you want to do that um, we can do find file on here and we can look for dash 
board, right? And you can see like here's another one like NV code you could use instead, some that I already have up here. Um, this is the one I'm using right now. And you can also change like, you know, all different kinds of things like use telescope. For instance, like we have find files there and you can do like telescope and then just like complete here and you can have telescope look for whatever you want. Like for instance, I'm doing find files, but you could have whatever you want, right? You could have like man pages or whatever, you know, like think of something, right? And then also you could just put something like for settings, for instance, here I have it opening uh, .config and then LV settings, right? So you could just pick a file too. So like maybe you want to do like your bash RC or Z shell RC or something like that directly in dashboard. Like you could do that, but this is just the example of like one uh, configuration option you could do. I think it's one that people are going to want to start with if they're working on their own, uh, like NVIM. They might want to change the title here and they might want to change the footer and they might want to change what uh, they can open up, right? And basically everything is configurable. It's just kind of a sane default way to get started. So like your LSP is going to work out of the box and a lot of common plugins um, are going to work out of the box. You'll have snippets and an easy way to, I guess, install things and get normal IDE features um, that might be a pain to kind of go and curate yourself, right? So I think that's pretty much it for me showing you uh, what's going on with uh, LunarVim and kind of how to use it and kind of a deeper dive into um, understanding some of like how, how, like how plugins work and uh, how to like work on the config yourself. So I'll just get into um, where you can find me um, and where I'll be streaming in the future and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, make sure to check the description of all the channels if you want to just easily find the links to everywhere I post uh, I post content. Uh, obviously, check me out over on GitHub. You can leave uh, the repo a star if you want or fork it for whatever you want or just, like I said earlier, you know, clone it down and get rid of the GitHub information entirely if you want. Um, also, check me out over on Odyssey. I'd rather you follow me on Odyssey than YouTube because uh, you never know what YouTube you can also find me over on Twitter. I post like my like videos and stuff like that over to Twitter. I won't spam you or anything. I barely post really anything, but you can at least, you know, see when I put up new videos. You can also follow me over on Twitch. Um, I When I stream, I stream to both YouTube and Twitch. So um, all of my streams will be on here as well. Uh, you can support me over on Patreon if you like the projects and code and stuff that I'm working on. And you can find me over on my website. Um, and this will have a link to basically all the same social media, as well as topics on things like Linux and NeoVim and blockchain and other stuff that I'm interested in. Uh, probably you'll, most likely if you're watching this video, you're probably gonna be more interested in some of the topics that I have on NeoVim. And here they all are right there. All right, so I think that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.